Hi everyone, welcome back to Chicory's Travels. Today we have something really exciting planned for you. As you can tell, we have a split screen here because we're gonna do an interview. So we would like you to tell us how you enjoy the interview and if you'd like to see more. Um, as you know, we've been living and traveling full time in our RV for just about four, four years. years now. And we decided it was time to branch out and get to know other full-time RVers. So we recently went to the RV Entrepreneur Summit that we told you about. And now we're branching out and meeting some virtually. So today we want to introduce you to Brandon and Carinza. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how long you've been full-time RVing. Hi, um, we're glad to be here. Thanks for inviting us. So as you said, we're Corinne and Brandon, and we've been on the road four years, over, well, four years, I guess, about the same amount of time as you guys. And we've um, just traveled all around, really. Yeah, we've been all over. Yeah. We, uh, we started with a, a big diesel pusher motorhome and then downsized to a, a gas motorhome, and we we found boondocking. We really enjoy that. And we run a Facebook group called RV to Freedom, where we have a ton of people in there that and our whole goal of our group is to help people learn how to live on the road so that they can learn how to live like we're doing and, yeah. and figure out how awesome it is. <laughs> and I have to say, I, I love that Facebook group and I'll put a link to it in the description below because uh, that's how I found Brandon and Krenza. I think it was last year. So we had been on the road three years, but you, you still have things to learn, don't yeah, you? And you still have questions <laughs> and you, you want to ask. And they have one of the things I love about your Facebook group is the way you moderate it and keep it positive because there's so much negativity out there yeah. online. <laughs> And, and you guys don't talk. There's like a zero tolerance policy for trolls. Yes. Yeah, we have yeah. to rule a little bit with an iron fist to keep it nice and, and yeah. pleasant for people. Because when you're trying to learn, you know, if people are being sarcastic and cracking jokes, the tone of voice doesn't come across on the internet. And all of a sudden you're afraid to ask questions because you don't want to get made fun of and we don't want right that. yeah i mean that's one of the reasons that we started the group because like you said there is all that kind of negativity and like a little snark and you know a lot of times people who've been out on the road for a long time they get sick answering the same questions over and yeah. over but we went in somewhere where people feel like they could just ask you know they're be beginning questions or what they think is a silly question but it's something you need to know because yeah. all of <laughs> yeah. us had those questions I mean, this is nothing like living in a house. Right. You know, you don't have to worry about your sewer and your electricity and your water too much in your house. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, this week I was working with a lady who wasn't familiar with RVs and she said, oh, wow, it must be nice living in an RV. There's very little that you have to do. And I said, oh, no, no, no. It's quite the opposite. Yeah. A lot of maintenance. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like if you only knew. No, I'm my own trash man now. Yeah. In my own yeah. And That's the other thing we want to do is help people set their expectations so that, you know, these things aren't built the way we all want them to be. If they were, we probably couldn't afford them. But, yeah. you know, if you understand what you're getting into, it, it makes life a little easier. And, and you yeah. know, if you know that YouTube's out there to help you fix something when you break it. It's, it helps a little bit. Yeah. So what, what made you decide to go full-time? Had you guys RV'd before you, you went full-time? We had a pop-up camper before we went full-time. So it was, you know, kind of a beginner into the RVing. But that was really just within the past few years before we yeah, started thinking years, about it. Yeah. yeah, a couple years. And the thing for us was that we, we lived in many places. Um, for work. We weren't in the military, but we did travel for work a lot. And we actually enjoyed the travel part the most. Like we would drive home to visit family and we always drove when we had our dogs and we stopped at all the little like tourist traps and roadside yeah, yeah. and yeah. historical markers. And, you know, we ended up enjoying the trips more than, you know, right. The and then, and then when we were, we lived around New York City, and uh, we were in New Jersey, and so that's when we, we started camping. We started with a tent, and then we got the pop-up camper, and we really looked forward to that, and we just started thinking about, is this something, like, somehow we could 
do all the time? Like, is it possible to keep this feeling going and, and be out there? And I think Brandon actually started finding something about full-time RVing, yeah. which seemed like a, Oh, it's a retirement dream. You know, yeah. I mean, for most people it is right. And that's, that's what I was like, I don't know about that. That's <laughs> a little outside my comfort zone. You know, at we, the were, time. we were in our pop-up camper in like um, KOA parks and all the, all the traditional regular parks that you think of. And we'd see these giant class A's there and we're like, Ooh, that must be nice. Or, or, yeah. or look at these guys, they're not camping. They're just watching TV and, and yeah. you know, we're those people, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, you see them out there. You're like, I could probably live in that. Yeah. You know, you know people, we already had a small apartment. I mean, yeah. we were around New York city. It's not yeah. like, exactly, exactly. And on the road, we've actually met people that live at full time in a pop-up camper. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 For a couple of years. I think they just moved up to a hard sided camper. Hard side trail, small, yeah. but it's still small trailer, but yeah. yeah. We knew we needed more than a pop-up, but <laughs> we, we decided that, that we enjoyed it so much and that we didn't really want to be constrained anymore to being in one spot and working in our cubicles yeah. that, <laughs> that we, we wanted to get out there and enjoy life now because I've seen, I've seen what it can happen in the future and we didn't know. Yeah, what even within our own families, future. you know, you see people make plans for retirement and plans for the future and just never make it there. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, this day and age is great because the internet makes it awesome that we can do a lot of things remote that people didn't have the opportunity to do before. Right. Um, and so we just wanted to take advantage of that. Um, what? So you went from your pop up to uh, diesel. <laughs> what resources did you uh, use to prepare? Did, was were there any resources out there at the time that you guys um, used? Well, I did a lot of the upfront research, and at the time, um, the big thing were forums. So there was the IRV two forums that we used, and um, you know, but those are they're a rabbit hole. You start asking questions, and you ask for ten ten people a question, and you get eleven answers, and. Yeah. And then it starts, you get these very matter of fact answers. Like I would never do it without diesel. I would never do it with anything smaller than this. I would never. And you're just like, Oh my gosh, we're never going to survive. <laughs> and, um, you know, there were some blogs out there, um, that we found, but then we, we would find blogs that were on the complete opposite end where they were living so tiny and so minimal and so like, you know, every little, like they take their games out of the boxes and put everything in Ziploc bags. So it was this small, so it could fit in a little cabinet. And I'm like, well, we can never do that. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And then it was just like, we were torn because we didn't know anybody who had done this. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people out there that had done it, but we didn't know anybody that we could just talk mm -hmm. to. And, and I think that's what led us to make decisions that were not right for us. Mm -hmm. They weren't bad decisions. They just weren't, they didn't take into account our lifestyle our and, and you know, coming from a, an apartment and a house and regular life, you don't know what you can adapt to. And so we went from a pop-up trailer to a 40 foot four slide diesel pusher, because that's what the internet told me I needed to have. <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome. It was beautiful and it was comfortable. And we had, you know, 20 people in it and we would entertain and set up a table in the middle. But once we got out here, we started to change we we weren't the same people we were before and, and once you start exploring then we wanted to explore more we wanted to push further we wanted to get out there further and the rv just it was too big for the things we wanted to do and, and yeah that, it just it led us to change and i you know that's the thing with it, it was the forums that we found we didn't really find many blogs at that point and and the, it was it was a different kind of feeling for what was out there. And unfortunately, we didn't find that many resources when we yeah. were looking and things that would actually get us to think about ourselves instead of just hearing others' opinions. Yeah, because a lot of the resources, yeah. even today, a lot of the resources that are out there are like, here's what I do. And that's right. just, I mean, that's fine because that's yeah. what they do and that's what they're showing. But it's, you know, that's you but why, why did you make those choices? And that's, you know, we're both designers and, and a big part of being designers is to ask why, you know, why right. are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And, and so that's a big kind of foundation of the way we think is okay, but why? Right. You, know? you got to get beyond that and figure out, okay, 
they do it like that, but why? And how does that apply to me? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, we started out with this huge 44 fifth wheel and then we started traveling and we fell in love with some of the state parks yep. and then found with our size, you can't get into a lot of state parks. So yeah. we're kind of in the same, same situation as you guys were, we're looking to, maybe downsize in the future at some point just so we can do a little more exploring. Yeah, right. so. that's exactly how we fit. And, you know, for the people on the forums, I think we were hitting a lot more retired people that were maybe snowboarding mm -hmm. where, you know, a big comfortable motor home or, or fifth wheel that, you know, goes down to a park and sits for a few months. And it's basically traveling up and down the East coast. Um, mm -hmm. It's very different than what you might want in the West um, on the side of a cliff. 35 miles yeah. down a dirt road, which is where we are right now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We, like Sean said also, and, and even you mentioned like your lives change too. Your, yeah. uh, your, what you appreciate or even what you need, because we had a son who was in college when we chose our fifth wheel, it's a toy hauler because that garage made into its own suite. Basically it has a right. bathroom it has a TV and it was perfect for him when he's coming home you know on every break now he's graduated he has a career we hardly ever see him unless we're in Texas right now so that we can visit him on his uh, off time you know so now we hardly ever use that garage it's almost like empty space so we always tell people when you're picking your first RV you're probably gonna change after a while I mean think about what drastic change you took from your house to your RV mm -hmm. why would some point maybe even change in your RV style so don't like lock yourself into something yeah. you know don't buy something so extravagant that you're not going to be able to get out of it if, if you change your mind because you yeah. probably will change your exactly. mind exactly exactly we had that advice too yeah don't yeah I guess it used to be like buy your last RV first and I was like how is that really possible yeah you can't I mean, you don't know the future and yeah, yeah and I have many years until I feel like it's my last RV yeah so <laughs> I'll probably change again yeah. At, yeah. at that point and Maybe then there's the work. you know coming from a house life it's there's always this keeping up with the Joneses and keeping up appearances you need to look a certain way to fit into a certain thing <laughs> And we fell into that too. So we wanted this big, beautiful diesel. So people didn't think we were crazy. And it's like, no, we're going to live a luxury life on the road. <laughs> Nobody out here cares what you have. And if they do care, you don't want to talk to them anyway. Like, right. you know, we have friends in travel trailers. One of our friends has this class C and from the outside of it, you'd think she's homeless. She <laughs> it's beautiful, you know, and, and it doesn't matter. And those are the things that, you know, you start to change that stuff doesn't matter anymore. It's more about, are you out here camping with me, having fun? Then awesome, you know, that's all that matters. Yeah. Right. Well, going back to your, you know, your Facebook group is one of the things that I really like about it, and you guys were just talking about, is that you explain the why. You know, if someone says, how much does it cost to RV full time? You don't just say, here's how, how much it costs because that really varies depending yeah. on what you're driving, if you're financing, if you're buying it outright, how often you're traveling. So you guys really take the time to explain all the different variables. If people say, I'm not retired, I need to earn an income. How can I do it? You, you know, give a lot of examples. It's not just only about you. It's a resource where you're taking your experience, but also what you've learned from other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I hear you even have an additional resource. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So because of our experience getting on the road and not really finding a, a handy resource, a comprehensive resource to help us move along, uh, we created one. Uh, so we have a course and it's called Roadmap to Full-Time RVing. And it leads you down the path from not having an RV, not knowing anything about it, all the way to getting on the road. Yep. And we went in to make something where you could follow along and just take these steps. And it helps you dive a little deeper into yourself, trying to figure out what you need and what you want to do when you get out there. So that when you're out there, you're having a better time. And you can still pull in all this other other information that you find and you know you watch people for inspiration but you're on your path and you're following it along and you're not trying to find a whole bunch of <laughs> yeah. things and piece it together and we we put it in an order that we like even though we <laughs> let you do it at any speed you want in any direction you want 
But we don't talk about the RV at first. The RV isn't important. The RV just gets you there. We talk about why you want to do it, where do you want to go, how much you can spend, what kind of life do you want to lead. Then we help you find that RV that fits that life. Oh, um, that's a great idea. Yeah, so many people jump right in and they go buy the RV and then they start figuring out how to RV. Um, yeah. And we want you to kind of think about, well, like you said, well, I want to stay in state parks or I want to be in a more natural surrounding or I want to mm -hmm. boondock or I want to, you know, I want family to come over um, or my budget is only this much, which means I'm going to have to do this kind of camping, which means if my RV is too big, I can't fit there and, and all of that stuff. And, and then we try to break down some of the myths. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had yeah. a diesel RV. We now have a gas RV. We haven't exploded yet. We've also gotten <laughs> up all the hills. Um, there are things about this that aren't as nice as the diesel, but there are things about it that are better. So, um, we try to break down those myths yeah. and help people understand that, you know, all that matter of fact information on the internet isn't quite matter of fact. Um, yeah. We try to actually lay it out in a, in a way that you can compare for yourself and how it relates to what you want to do. And then the other part of it, um, that we really enjoy because we went at this alone. I mean, we had everybody on the internet telling us, but we were still alone. Mm -hmm. um, we do the course with you. So awesome. when you take the course, we're right there with you to answer your questions. There's a private Facebook group for mm -hmm. students. So you can ask questions without 500 answers or you can ask embarrassing questions. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you don't want out in public. Right. Cause you know, sometimes there's those things you feel too silly to ask in a, a public group, a big yeah. group. You're like, I don't want people to know, but yeah. you know, you yeah. need to ask it somewhere so you can ask in a group. And then we do calls within the group too, where people can ask questions and we're in there on a live video similar to this. And um, we, we answer them right there. And as they ask more questions or have come up with more because of something we said, we're right there to answer them. Yeah. And if we, we try to get answers, if for some reason it's something that we're not as familiar with. Right. Know? Yeah. We had a Canadian students. So there's a lot of Canadian specific, you know, things that we didn't know, but we know Canadian RVers. So we're like, yeah. Hey, go talk to this person, go talk to that person. Yeah. You know? We connected them together for some of the healthcare issues that they have that we're, we're not as familiar with not being Canadian, yeah. but we do talk about like things like that in our course, at least for the U S it's, yeah. um, about moving your life onto the road too, you know, all that mundane stuff that you, mm -hmm. you don't take, think about at all when you're in a sticks and bricks, right? And yeah. it's like banking and your healthcare. Well, how does that apply when you're moving around every few weeks or every month or something? Yeah. So there's all these little bits and pieces that have got to go there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you don't even know to ask right. when you're getting started. So yeah, exactly. you can yeah, you could watch thousands of hours of YouTube, but you might miss that one key piece of information that it's like, oh, I, I missed that thing. And so we just kind of shortcut the whole thing, create a roadmap to get you right from the beginning to the end and lay it out what you need to know and help you understand that, yes, this is something you've got to pay attention to. This is not that big a deal, you know, and help you understand where to put your efforts. And if you haven't started already, start downsizing yesterday. Yeah. Because that's... Yeah. <laughs> It's not that easy. <laughs> no, and it's like the biggest challenge for everyone. It seems like yes. that. <laughs> yeah, point there. I really just love the name of it, roadmap, because it really does cover everything that you, you know, like you said, from start to finish. And I really wish a resource like that had been available when we first started, because we thought did a pretty good job of researching. But like you said, you have to know what question to ask right and when you're first getting started you don't always know so some things you know we learned the hard way right. because we didn't know to ask that question so i love the way you guys have the full roadmap laid out and when people do the course then do they have access to be able to go back because you know you can't always remember it's like what did they say about yeah. you know, something Right. Absolutely. So you have lifetime access to the course. And so you can go back. So like if you're doing it, some people we've had students come in and they don't, they're, they're gung ho about, you know, RVing, right. And they want to get this foundation in place right now. So they're maybe a year or two out from when they actually plan to leave. So they're getting all the bases in line and figuring out what it is they want and, and then getting the RV, but maybe some of the pieces about being this, on the road yeah. 
they need to go back and refresh. So they can go back and watch the videos. And then we also have it formatted for printing. So it's it basically it's a book that you yeah. can just print out and um, keep there in like reference. And yeah, we tried to think about all the different ways that people learn. Like I'm an audio visual learner. I want the video and the audio, but some people want to read it. Yeah. Some people want the paper that they can follow along. So every, pretty much everything we say on the videos is on the paper. So you can follow along, you can highlight, you can take notes. We've even oh. stripped the audio out of the videos so that you can listen to it in your car on your commute. Or oh wow, that's great. We've, we've tried to cover every base. Yeah. There's every possible avenue of success right and there's a uh, handouts even and i know one of our our past students she has them laminated and she keeps them there so she can reference them when needed <laughs> yeah and because yeah. of the lifetime access there's a lot of things that do change you know apps come and go uh resources come and go healthcare things change um and so with that lifetime access as it's updated you get it you know it's not like a you got to pay more for more you know Oh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Once you're in, you're in, you know? Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Yeah. So how can people access the course? Where do they go to find it if they were interested? Well, we're going to put a link in the description. Yeah. Because I think you guys already gave it. To, so okay. sorry, I didn't tell you that, dear. <laughs> but we'll put a link in the description. People can click on and take them to the link. And if they do it right away, you guys are going to be having a free webinar even. So yeah. that they yes. can hear more about it. I think, what'd you say you're going to cover five? Yeah, we call it five steps to freedom. So it's really kind of the five things you need to start thinking about to get you, to get on the road, to, get on the road. to yeah. get on the road. Yeah. It's like these, these are five essential steps that this, these are the things that you must do to get yourself into full-time RVing. So of course there's, you know, little bits and pieces, but we're going to go over those steps so that you know that these are the things you can start to plan out. Yeah what your roadmap looks like yeah and so it's a it's a one hour webinar and you know you can't cover getting onto the road in one hour but in one hour we're going to try to give you as much as we possibly can and make sure that you know you're starting to think about the right steps and maybe in mm -hmm. the right order or at least the order that we yeah. think's right um and then you know if you like you could take the course and take it further yeah awesome and i have i have a one question kind of a side question how do the pets like being on the road? Our, our, pets, our pets are fun. Like it. Yeah, every yeah. time we stop, they want to go outside. Yeah. Um, they enjoy boondocking more because they get more. Just to get, we have two dogs now, yeah. so they know what kind of pets we're talking right. about here. Yeah. We did have a, we started with a cat and two dogs, and we actually ended up with another cat for a while. So we had two cats and two dogs, but they all actually enjoy it and yeah. all want to go outside and see yeah <laughs> where we are but our dogs definitely like boondocking better because um they get more space to roam yeah. around yeah yeah you know the rv parks i can't just let them out in the morning and you know so it's they're they're a little more frustrated with us in the rv parks because we have to work and we <laughs> outside all the time i think we told you guys we're on a cliff here and so yeah. it's a it's a little disconcerting sometimes with the dogs and i did put kona on his um tie out the other day because i'm like you no, you're scaring me. I think I got <laughs> this soul, but <laughs> he kind of gave me this look like, oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to come on here and talking to us about it. And I hope everyone here goes to see the free webinar. It's totally free. You get the top five tips that are going to help you get on the road. You can learn more about uh, their program, which is Roadmap to Full-Time RVing. Yep. And it's a great program. I have had the opportunity to go through it. And it really is very comprehensive. We wish we would have had something like that when we started. Um, heck, we could probably still use something like that now because <laughs> we're thinking about starting boondocking. We're still like, a hundred percent full hookup not even partial hookup you know it's even kind of nerve-wracking so uh, there's always a, a continual learning so lifetime access is is just amazing because you might not need something right now but when you need it down the road then it's there for you yeah yeah exactly we want to be a support system all along the way yeah <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about it. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah.